Hey guys, welcome back to Kubus Hour Reviews. We're taking a look at Iron Factory's IFEX 45, Yoroi Shishimaru. So that is their homage to Leo Convoy. And it's pretty cool because it's a mixture of the kind of T-Beast Zoids-esque interpretation that Perfect Effect made into a toy years back. And just their own samurai take as well. Like It's a nice little mix and blend of aesthetics and things like that it's cool so here he is next to a number of iron factory figures just pick some random ones out of the shelf if you notice even the shelves back there are getting emptied and stuff like that we actually close on our new house next week so all of this stuff has been getting packed 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 kind of crazy so he is about three and three and three quarters just under that from my perspective compared to Seekers and the cone heads are the same, so he is about he's a little bit because of the cone uh, not like four and an eighth city commander ultra magnus he is about four and a half where Cygnus their jet fire is five and a quarter it looks like and then got a big old combiner in the back too bring him a little bit closer so he's in the light. I know he's he's pretty dark, but he's around eight and three quarters inches tall, just under nine, so yeah. On the smaller side, especially for the non fembots, but getting these out of the way, before we super dig into this guy, you can see Quick shot at him. And then looking over at the accessories. Raise this guy up. Variety of hands and sword and sheath. As well as the box and the instructions. And it's really cool. This is their Iron Samurai series. So they don't get like different numbers like IFS1, you know, like that kind of thing. They're still part of the IFEX line which is kind of a subway which makes sense because they're still in the same size class and whatnot same build style and things like that just a different different stylistic approach all right so actually I'm gonna zoom into his head first because I'm noticing that that's a little bit a little bit small but there's a lot of detail in there too So there we go. So you can see. And it's nice because when it comes to a lot of face sculpts, to me, Iron Factory, even though I like the generic face sculpt that they've designed, it gets kind of samey, if that makes sense. So it's cool to see something different, especially an original take. That's really neat. All right. Get this guy focused again. I just want to give you guys a roundabout. Really nice gold paints and things like that. Playing with it a bit. Doesn't feel like it's going to scratch or anything like that. Really good paint and finish. And we'll look more at it in alt mode, but just a quick look at the lion's head as well. I love the samurai headgear on that. That is cool. And it's different. This is what I like to see. So if you guys uh, follow me on Facebook, and post a few pictures on there try to keep the meat of the stuff to the full galleries on my site but just you know when chatting and stuff like that I've gone on about I'm not the biggest fan of G1 I'll just go ahead and say that so a lot of things that have been leaning towards that aesthetically especially slavish to that G1 animation really not my thing and since it doesn't like hamper articulation I'm going to go ahead and pike that on. And we'll just start going through it. Heads on a ball joint. But yeah, so seeing creative stuff like this, it's nice. Because since those companies like make toys and whatnot have not necessarily died, but definitely slowed down, we haven't seen a lot of fresh takes on things, which is neat. Well, this is cool. All right. So I noticed that there's a hinge in here too, but it really doesn't do anything that second one there so we got that 
All right. Now this obviously moves out of the way. It moves back and forth. It can move up and down. Now getting that out of the way, looking at the shoulders. There's the parallel. Oh, I pop it off the ball joint. It's not loose, but it definitely ain't tight. But there's a parallel. It can go around with moving that out of the way. It's just one of those things that comes with the territory when it comes to a Leo Convoy toy. They all kind of do it. It's inherent in the design of it, unfortunately. All right. So double jointed elbows. That's pretty cool. See that? Make sure we're focused there. Now the wrist, these actually come out here at the end. It's on a ball joint. So they rock, they rotate, but yeah, that's how you change out the hands too. And that keeps popping off for me. It's not loose, but it's definitely not tight. I might give that some polish on my own time, both of those shoulder joints. All right. And on the other end, the head also can rotate and it has some movement there too. All right. Get the sword back in place. Now the waist, moving this stuff. Waist can do a 360, but we're not gonna take it there. And it does actually, I'll show you from this side, have some ab crunch, not a lot, but it's cool to see. The torso actually reminds me a lot of the perfect effect. All right, then back swing, front swing, okay. Now these side skirts, move out of the way, side, okay. now looking at the knees, double jointed knees, the feet, there's a hinge here, so that automatically kind of takes it forward, but then the back is not, not, is there anything, it's on a ball joint, but it really doesn't have any back swing when the foot's straight down, so boo to that. But the foot itself can move up and down there. The ankle has some downward movement. I have yet to transform this thing. We're going to do it for the first time here on camera. I'm sure it's not too hard. Well, hopefully it's not. We'll see. I might have to edit it out if so. Make it a separate video. Don't want this 20 minutes long. All right. Now, let's go ahead and just get it into a pose quick. And we'll move on to the elbow. Right. Now, there are two sword holding hands. One's a slanted one. With the sword at an angle so got that and what's nice is that all of these have the paws attached so you should be able to transform it with most of them okay that one thing i don't like about this design is that there aren't any peg holes in it to go on these stands or anything like that which is unfortunate it seems like iron factory is kind of getting away from that in general no nah, i don't like it <sighs> And we're just doing an open hand on the other hand. Now these peg in, all right. They peg in well, but I don't hear that pop, so it's hard to confirm when it's in or not, so you'll just have to look. Mm, maybe I should do the other foot. And then we could turn it out the waist. Now the stand that I got is from Bandai. I don't remember what toy line it was, to be honest with you. It might have been Robot Damashi, but they're Hero Man, or not Hero Man. Yeah, it is Hero Man figure. I was trying not to get him mixed up with Big Hero 6, but in my head I did anyway. So we'll make it so he's going upwards. Okay. And there we go. Let's go ahead and get this guy transformed into alt mode. Check that out. Okay, guys, we're going to get this transformation to go. One thing I did do was remove the sword and sheath, as well as put the generic uh, closed fist on. And outside of that, pretty standard stuff. So the first thing in the instructions is to bring these paws down to kind of paw level. I mean, it makes sense if you think about how he's going to set in lion mode. All right. So the next step per the instructions is taking these the fronts of these feet, flipping them up, flipping them up, making sure you guys can see. From there, 
So like each of the feet is being turned around just at the feet, that ankle, ball joint right there. Boom. And then turn those heels inward like we went over on the last section. In fact, they could do that at least. All right. So now, it looks like in the back, they're just revisiting the paws at this step. And they look the same as we had before. So I'm not going to mess with that much. It seems like something we can adjust if need be towards the end. But back to the front, flipping the head around, okay? Flipping the head around right at the ball joint. Now, it's having us turn the legs around at the hip, all right? So 180 of those legs, make sure we're focused there. Each leg at the hip, all right? And only the hip, right there. So you should have something like this, per the instructions. And then from there, there's like this hinge piece on the back. You're just taking each of these feet, send them up, send them up, so you have something like that. All right. And there it kind of stops and shows you what it should look like. I'm feeling pretty good about this. And these hinges here, it's having us bring them up. All right. Let me zoom into that to show you what's going on here. So these hinges, you could flip the side squirts up and down, and it wants them up. Okay. Zoom them back out. Make sure I'm seeing. And from there, it's having us turn him around. All right. And it's having us lift this way up. And from there, it looks like it's having us flip this inwards, like so. I told I'm correct. Yep. Then get this line head more to the side. And it looks like it's having us flip this downwards. Okay, so going over the instructions, skip, skipping ahead a little bit. All right. I'll show you what the confusion was, right? So, for me, the way that it has this flip down is like it can pretty much go past 90 degrees. And on mine here in hand, it can flip down, but not like that. Obviously, it's a lot more straight up. So, we're going to work with what we got and just kind of see. Maybe it's the angle or something like that as well. I'm not sure. But this is flip, flip back. There's a T-bar in there that you flip up. You can just use your fingernails. Mine are relatively short, so uh, pretty much anybody can use their fingernails to do it. And then from there, it has us. This is a hinge right here. Taking this whole thing and flipping it down like so. Okay? So it looks pretty good, even though it doesn't have that sharp angle of the other or of the instructions you know like i said working with what we got all right so what it's having us do is split a leg out split a leg out and bring this down okay from here the t is supposed to clip into something and i see it all right so insides of the thighs there there are little divots there okay so you know where they're supposed to clip I don't know if I could do this perfectly on camera, but you know what I'm going for, so you should be able to do this part as well. I'm just adjusting that T-bar. Right. And the thing is, those divots in the thighs aren't super deep. All right, so one side's in, going for the other side, boom. All right, there we go. That actually lined up pretty well. Okay. All right, and that's what it should look like from the other side. Okay, make sure that I'm in the right spot. Okay, so now, from here, it's having us flip up this line head and then flip it around. So, easy enough. Okay, there's a main piece here that L's back. Okay, so, what's up? And then just bring it down on the hinge. 
that kind of covers up these hinge pieces there. Okay. And you can already kind of see what it's going for. So with the chest, the chest is supposed to flip up, which it did really easily. And under here, let me zoom in. Two hinges. Bring each of them down. Each of them down, each of them down. Okay. Make sure I'm at the right spot in the instructions. And from what it's saying, I should be here. Have him looking a bit like. All right, so the elbow should be facing the inside for the instructions. And the paws should also be facing the inside, which makes a lot of sense. From there, just gotta make sure your shoulder's in the right spot. Bring it down, rotate around. Bring it down, rotate around. You should have something like that, right? Okay. And then here, that's where it's already been up. And then there's a hinge piece right there for each of the back legs. Boom, boom. Oh, these shoulder joints, I wish they were tighter. Not gonna lie, that is, that's a markdown. Okay. And I love that they have those ball joints there because it gives it some tilt, much needed tilt. I just hit the camera. But there we go. It's in alt mode and looking pretty good. And before I consider this finished, there is one last piece. And it's literally the last part in the instructions. Got a little bit ahead of myself. These hip skirts actually go over the arm pieces. Make sure they're down. They don't completely cover them. But yeah, so let's make sure to do that on each side. And then, you know, stand them up and all that good stuff. There we go. Okay, so we got them all transformed. Just giving you guys a roundabout here. Make sure we're focused. This guy's centered. at the face the piece under the chin does move by itself but it's kind of tight so you can see it moves there but then the mouth as a whole moves too so there you go and then the head not a lot of movement but it's there the arms are pretty much the same arms as in the robot mode, so the front paws, I mean, shoulders, front and back, double joint at that elbow, and then the ankle rocker is great. The fact that they use ball joints there is genius, as well as utilizing them for like changing out the hands, that is just, it's one of those little engineering things you see that's like, holy crap. Now, where it gets kind of dicey, we'll go over the tail here, up and down, no side to side or anything like that. But these back legs, unfortunately, since they we tapped them into that T piece earlier, they don't have any like outward movement. So no matter how wide your stance is in front here, let's get out. And I actually want to bring the camera up a bit. The back is still pretty narrow, and that looks eh. But you could just unpeg them from the T. And it doesn't take away anything aesthetically to me while giving them that aesthetic and even physical balance. All right, so you saw how you're supposed to be, and you see what we're doing in terms of just kind of doing our own thing, posing-wise. So we're going to pretend like we know the default, but we're going to look at this as well. Oh, and the tail can actually 360, so it can do that too. So there's movement here, movement here, that hinge, and then tail. So let's get them into a generic kind of prowling pose now that we've 
kind of unlock those hips. I wish that his head moved a little bit more upwards, but working with what we got. Okay. These shoulders are loose. So, now I can attest. And playing with it a bit more, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do wish that these paws could flip over the hands a little bit more to go downwards for like when his arm is forward, but it's not bad. Honestly, this is a really nice iteration of Leo Convoy. I love the aesthetic of it. I wish that, you know, functionally, it was a bit better. Can't lie. But overall, I mean, it's not, it's not bad. There we go. Okay. It still seems like he's leaning. We're going to play with this. I'm sorry. I'm going to be that anal guy right now. See, the shoulders, like that ball joint there, that's just loose. That could be taken care of with polish, but just no. On my copy, at least. A loose. I like that a bit better from up there. There we go. All right, now that I've got him in a better pose, this has been Iron Factory's IFEX 45, the first in their Iron Samurai series. Iro Shishimaru, again, their homage to... Transformers Beast Wars 2 Leo Convoy. Yeah, I dig it quite a bit. The one thing that I don't like on my copy, um, and I haven't seen any of the reviews to know if it's a widespread issue, but those shoulder, those ball joints, are pretty loose. Again, fixable by a dab of polish or whatever, but it makes just transforming and playing with it until you do that a little bit less fun than it should be. But yeah, I dig it quite a bit and I want to try something else out because I thought of it aesthetically or whatever because we have those yeah I mean come on that that's freaking cool you can't tell me that's not but anyway it's a different take I like where they're going with that I like to see creative stuff Outside of those uh, ball joints on the shoulders, I think it's pretty darn cool. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. As always, thank you for your support. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.